One Charlie. Mark, one Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm full of optimism. Einstein's theory of relativity. And we're still seeing it quite well through that haze. T-minus 37 seconds. The fight is growing. E equals MC. That all men are created about the future innovations. And growing strength in the air. Ignition sequence. Tear this is Finding Your Frequency with your hosts, Jeff Spinard and Ryan Treasure. It's time to speak up, share your voice, and hear from the thought leaders. Hello and welcome to Finding Your Frequency. I am your host, Jeff Spinard, CEO and President of World Talk Radio, home to the Voice America Talk Radio and TV networks. Joining me, my co-host, 12-year colleague, 17-year veteran, and my vice president of broadcast operations, Mr. Ryan Treasure. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing really good, Jeff. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction. You know, uh, a couple minutes ago, we went live on Facebook, and we're right here live on Voice America Variety, and really excited to uh, to bring to everybody the idea of finding a frequency, man. Absolutely. You know, we got the camera over here. Because we'll be on Voice America TV, we're live on Facebook over here, and of course we're broadcasting live to the world. So, very happy to be here. This is our inaugural show of Finding Your Frequency. We've got a whole lot to share with you. Uh, we're very excited to be here to do this. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been a long time coming, a lot of planning mm. for us on the show and uh, really trying to get everything together so we can really showcase to uh, everybody what mm. Voice America is all about and, uh, you know, practice what we preach in the Absolutely. realm of new media. All the capabilities, all the technologies, all the bells and whistles, the toys that we tell everybody to use, uh, we will be using our show uh, as kind of a... Uh, uh, a, a launching pad or something that we're going to be able to help people to expand and grow on their shows. So anyway, some of the questions uh, that we're going to uh, answer for you today, uh, the who, what, why, when, how, and where uh, of the show and what we're going to accomplish with this program. So I want to start off with, you know, uh, first of all, who is Jeff Spinard? Who is Ryan Treasure? Yeah. So we're going to be going over uh, the who. What is... Finding your frequency. What is finding your frequency about? Uh, what will we be doing with the show? Uh, who's going to be on the show? Uh, are we going to take calls with the show? Uh, emails, social networking. What are we going to be doing with the show? Uh, the why. Okay, uh, what is the show about? Uh, it's to help people, teach people, train people, educate people, get them involved in media in some capacity, or to simply find their voice and get it out there. You know, some people are very eccentric. They may find their frequency, but they don't know how to share that. Yeah. Whereas others and the people that we work with are the people that want to really get their voice out there. Yeah, it seems like everywhere we go, there's always, you know, somebody that has uh, some kind of an incredible story or, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a story about triumphing over, you know, health matters or whether it's an, you know, an upbeat entrepreneurial story or all of that. But, you know, everybody always has such a great story to share. And it's awesome to be, uh, you know, part of the Voice America family and being able to work with those hosts and take, you know, all of their stories and put them on one platform where, uh, you know, we can literally touch the world. Sure, sure. And I think, you know, with that, you, you speak of platforms. You know, a lot of people, there's this whole uh, facade in the podcasting, streaming media, and we'll get into that in later episodes. Uh, but the beauty of Voice America, you mentioned the word family. We are a family. Yep, we have 200-plus hosts that do shows with us. Normally that would sound like a lot. But reality is it's not because when you look at a, a podcast operation with a huge platform with 10,000 people dropping content into one reciprocal, it's very difficult to find. Yeah. With Voice America, we have eight genre-based channels. There's only one host an hour that is going to be on that channel. So technically, there's only eight people that you could possibly listen to during one hour on the Voice America Network. Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, all of us who are, you know, uh, born like pre-1980 or in that era, right, <laughs> um, 
we all grew up watching what's you know linear television right you know and that's what's so cool about the platform it literally takes the same premise of you know linear uh, radio and couples it together with on-demand content all in a digital space where you can get it on your phone and you know in all these other places and it's definitely uh, been quite the paradigm shift from like when you and I were kids and how you know mass media is projected to to people and it's just mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely growing and it's out it's it's almost growing out of control agreed agreed <laughs> Agreed. And then you have all your other uh, tools and technologies with your Facebook Live. And, of course, yeah. we have the TV network. So, you know, you're going to learn a lot of what we're talking about uh, in much greater detail as we move on with different uh, segments of the show. Uh, Finding Your Frequency started off, of course, as a book. Uh, that was a book I released, I think, in March. Uh, it was about March. Uh, Finding Your Frequency was written so I could... Uh, you know, it, it's finding your frequency, how to broadcast yourself in your message. So the reason for the book was it's a toolkit to help people to determine their message, define their message, define their goals, create a media strategy, uh, help build the media toolkit, how to monetize, everything from A to Z uh, in the broadcast media world. So, you know, that's kind of what we're, we're pushing off on, and that's what you'll learn as we go along. Yeah, if you guys uh, go go check out Jeff's website at uh, jeffspinard.com and all the information about the book is on there as well as, you know, several videos and things of Jeff doing some speaking things and us out and about doing all kinds of cool things. But it'll definitely give you an idea about what the book is about. And, you know, of course, go purchase the book. If you're interested in, uh, you know, finding out about what Jeff does, what Voice America does, how our hosts do what they do, all that information is in the book. Um, and that's, that's also, uh, you know, part of the topic matter you know, bringing on uh, some thought leaders in the space that go sure. along with those chapters and, you know, sitting them down, whether they're here in the studio with us or right. on the telephone or Skype or any of that. And, you know, really extracting, you know, what, you know, their frequency means and how that correlates with those chapters in the book. So there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up, you guys. So really excited to be here and be on with Jeff. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Jeff and I have worked together for a really long time and uh, uh, we've done radio and done interviews, but we've never actually uh, sat down and had our own, Listen, our own 20, piece. I, I was saying this <laughs> earlier 22 years in the business being the man behind the man <laughs> now for the first time ever and you're seeing it hearing it uh first i am the man behind the mic so that's going to be something to get used to uh you know you would think oh you've been in media for all this time it should be no sweat uh no it's still kind of a sweat it's something i'm gonna <laughs> have to get used to uh but i'm cool with it i'll i'll, I'll roll <laughs> with the punches so it's all good uh, that actually goes right along with the, the when part of it. Uh, when is every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. PM Eastern. We'll be here every week. Uh, we'll be going over uh, each chapter will be an episode. Uh, and, of course, we'll add different players to the mix. We'll bring media per personalities. Uh, we'll have some of our own hosts as guests on the show We'll be bringing in advanced technology people. Uh, there's a lot we're going to do with it. We're even going to bring our own uh, colleagues in to talk about what it's like to be an executive producer, what it's like to be an engineer, what it's like to, to be a part of the Voice America Network. Uh, the how, how to broadcast and handle uh, your form. What do we teach people? We teach people, you know, how to broadcast media, how to handle a format, how to take guests, how to take calls, uh, the ins and outs of how we do business at Voice America. Uh, you know, you're not going to get the special sauce, and we're not going to teach you to open your own <laughs> company or nothing, but uh, you'll learn exactly how Voice America uh, handles their business. So good things are coming. And you guys, uh, I'm, I know you guys are out there on uh, Facebook Live, and you see me kind of poking off to the side. I'm, you know, as uh, as we're going along here, I'm trying to do my diligence to get everything out on social media, right? As we're doing this, you know, in the whole practice what you preach thing. So uh, you can follow us, you guys, at Voice America TRN on Twitter. That's Voice America's main uh, Twitter account. We also have uh, the uh, Jeff Spinard Twitter at Jeff Spinney Two, and then of course you can find me anywhere on the web, uh, my Facebook and uh, Twitter at Radio. Rock. 
Ryan won, uh, and we're sending out all the information and uh, all that out on those pieces. And uh, so stay tuned for more of that information throughout the show, uh, out through social media. And don't forget, guys, you can call into the show uh, and and ask questions. Tell us a little bit about you know uh, you finding your frequency and uh, the road to path to get there and what that might mean to you. Uh, you can give us a call at 866-472-5788. Eight, eight, and uh, we got the phone lines open. Our buddy Aaron is uh, running the board, so say hello to Aaron when you Aaron, guys call in. Aaron, how you in. doing back there, by the way? Say hello. <laughs> hello. Okay, hey. so you know Aaron's with us at all times. The, the advantage to you live uh, broadcast. Yeah, all you guys out there who, uh, you know, do your other podcast duties, uh, you know, it's so, so awesome to have a technical board operator engineer in the background answering the phone calls, checking the sound levels, keeping everything, you know, exactly the way it needs to be so we can keep uh, up to par with the broadcast quality and all that. And uh, I see that uh, Easy Way is uh, jumping out there on uh, the Facebook Live. So thanks, guys. Hashtag Easy, Easy Way. Easy Way, guys, coming <laughs> in. What's happening, guys? Appreciate it. So, hey, uh, Jeff, we're coming up on a commercial break. It looks like we got about a minute to go. Yep. Um, so why don't, we, uh, why don't we play that little bit of music for a minute here? We'll do that before we jump in there real quick. Uh, when we come back from break, we're going to be talking about who is Jeff Spinard, who is Ryan Treasure. So... Uh, we'll get to that and let people learn a little bit about who's hosting this show. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. Hey, ladies and gentlemen out there in Internet land, welcome back to the radio show. You're listening to Finding Your Frequency exclusively right here on voiceamerica.com. I'm here with the CEO and president of uh, Voice America, Mr. Jeff Spinard. Welcome back to the show. Everybody out there, we're on Facebook Live. Go check that out. Uh, we also got some stuff going out on Twitter and on LinkedIn. We're trying to keep it uh, moving right along for the first inaugural launch of the show. Jeff, really excited to be here. You know, let's uh, let's get into segment number two and tell everybody what it's all about. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and also, I want to mention that, of course, VoiceAmerica.tv will have this uh, segment available for you uh, probably by tomorrow, if not the next day. Okay, so moving forward, um, we want to talk about uh, who we are. In other words, who is Jeff Spinard? Who is Ryan Treasure? So we're going to start off with Mr. Treasure, Mr. 17-year veteran. Ryan, why don't you tell us about who you are? Right on. Appreciate it. Um, so I've been at Voice America for 12 years, um, but I've been in the media space for 17 years. So I'm just going to kind of start back at the beginning. Uh, I uh, started in media space in 1999 working at a terrestrial radio station. Um, I got a uh, an internship at KFNX here in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and while I was... No letters, please. <laughs> Uh, and and while I was working at that, <laughs> uh, while I'm working at that internship, uh, I was also doing another job as a stagehand uh, for different kind of uh, rock and roll shows and hip hop shows and uh, doing audio and lighting and videography and stuff like that. Uh, so that was what was paying my bills at the time while I was doing the uh, uh, the piece over at the No Letters uh, radio station. And uh, finally, I got hired on full time at the terrestrial radio station and uh, started doing all the overnights over there and uh, had my own radio show called uh, Digging Through the Crates, and uh, we did uh, radio uh, for three years on there, uh, all about uh, electronic music, industrial music, and brought on DJs and different uh, composers and interviewed them, and it was a, a really good time, and uh, actually was the first time that I met Jeff was over at that uh, other mm -hmm. radio station. That, that other place, right. <laughs> And uh, so got to work there for a while and then, uh, you know, was finishing up all my college stuff in that time and uh, graduated uh, from Phoenix College and uh, the Academy of Radio and Television Broadcasting back in 2002. Uh, and then uh, went back to doing my thing with uh, uh, staging and all that stuff and got to do two years of uh, like West Coast touring uh, for all kinds of live events I've done. If you name a band. I've probably done their show, whether it was that's, in... That's some great experience, yeah. I would imagine. And it, you got to see some cool bands out there. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, you know, it was a lot of hard work, you know, unloading trucks and lighting and all that video stuff, but definitely got uh, a whole lot of experience in what it means mm -hmm. to really do something live. Because when you're doing, you know, um, like a live concert and you're, you know, managing, uh, you know, uh, monitors on, on side of the stage for that band mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, it's definitely, you know, got the, got the pressure screws going to you at that time. Uh, but then um, I, I came on to Voice America in December of 2004 part-time when I first had started, and yeah, I was kind of working, working both at the same time. And 
uh, from 04 uh, until, you know, the uh, the change in 2010 with the company. Um, I worked my way up to being the uh, production manager. Um, and then in 2010, I became the VP of broadcast operations. And I've been uh, right did. here by Jeff's side, uh, working through all of his vision and, you know, trying to just make the best content that we can and bring on the best hosts and get out there and do all kinds of live events. And that's, that's what I'm all about. I really Absolutely. like live. Ryan, thank you. Uh, that was great. I mean, that's the experience is unbelievable. Uh, the audio visual. I got to say, you know, in 2006, well, even when you came on, in two, I remember when you came on in 2004, uh, you started off as an engineer, uh, but quickly made your mark on this company. <laughs> I mean, it was probably only uh, three years uh, from the time you walked in the door at Voice America to the time we decided that you were going to take over. Uh, because at that time, okay, let me, I'll get back to you in a minute. Let me go a little bit through yeah, my, absolutely. my, 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 some uh, of that background. stuff kind of goes together. So. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll bring it together here. So, uh, my, I have, a, my background is I've been in media for 22 years. Uh, I've done everything from producer to ad sales. Uh, I did some, some guest hosting before. I was never a host. I told you guys, you know, my first time behind the mic. Uh, I did some guest hosting, but uh, everything had to do with the financial piece of the company. I, I gener I've generated millions of dollars uh, for any organization I've been with. Um, so that's that entrepreneurial uh, person I have in me. Yeah. And it's funny because I think back now, you know, you think now to what you did when you were a kid. Uh, I was 11 years old. I had a paper route. Now, my paper was not just a small route. I had almost 200 uh, papers that I delivered on a daily basis. So I would actually average about $200 a week. Uh, the Providence Journal, they got their piece, you know, I did because they had to pay for the customers had to pay for the paper. Right, right. And anything I collected above what they wanted was my money. I kept those tips. So anyway, you know, here I am, 11 years old. I'm delivering 200 papers a week. I'm making about 200 bucks a week. But after a year of doing that, it kind of gets old. You know, I love the money part because I was the only 11-year-old with brand new Nikes on, brand new Levi's, my leather jacket, my Iron, Iron Maiden t-shirts. You know, I had all new clothes, new, new, you know, new everything. That was the cool part of making money. Uh, but I realized that I was an entrepreneur early in life. Because I went ahead and I leased out over half of my paper route to two of my friends, uh, and I paid them about uh, I think it was forty bucks each. So I would pay them eighty dollars to take care of eighty percent of the delivery, and then I would keep one hundred and twenty dollars because I ran all the collections. That's working smarter, not harder. Absolutely. So, <laughs> Absolutely. you know, that's kind of how I learned my, uh, it was just inherent, that natural entrepreneurship. But anyway, let's hop into uh, when I get into media. Uh, it was uh, mid-90s when I moved from Beverly Hills back to Rhode Island. And part of the reason why I was going back to Rhode Island was because I had a, an offer from a radio network uh, to be one of their executive producers. So I packed my bags, I traveled cross country, and I get myself in the media field. Now, media at that time, it was a sales job. You know, I was working with brokering time, I was selling advertising, uh, there was a lot of sales involved in what my position was. Um, after, you know, the first three years to me, uh, it was a job. I made a lot of money, but it was a job to me. Uh, it took about five years before I realized that I was finding my frequency. You know, media was becoming uh, a, a career for me. And once I had a conversation with the owners of SurfNet Media, uh, this was about uh, 1999, early 99. Uh, a, a girl by the name, name of Michelle Wolf. I don't know if you remember Michelle Wolf, but she was programming the punk rock station for a company called Surfnet Media. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, she had come to me and we started talking, and we were talking about talk radio 
and how we do business at uh, the station. This is the station where I met you. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I'm i sorry, and I've told you this before, but, yeah, but I, I don't remember you at the station. Yeah, you want to know why you don't remember me from the station, right? Uh, why? Because I was, at the time, you were in transition on your way to start the Voice America thing. Ah. Right, okay. I was only part time on an internship in the beginning, and you were like one of the big wigs at the station, and okay. so there wasn't a lot of you know. Interaction. So I, I was already legend. Yeah. yeah, you were already like it was like <laughs> oh that's Jeff oh and because you remember Chad Wagner right? Uh, Ch- vaguely, yeah, right, I remember Chad from here. Yeah, but he was so he was also a board op over at that other station, right. and he had worked there for two years before I had came on board and was doing all the naked truth shows and all that kind of stuff in that overnight set we had over right. there, and um. And uh, that I had to ask him. I was like, "Who's that guy?" And he's like, "Oh, that's Jeff. He's the you know senior senior EP guy right. over here." You I know? trained all and, the uh, executive producers. Literally, when Jeff tells you guys that um, you know he's he's brought in millions and millions of dollars in the talk radio and new media space, he's not lying. Even you know when I was a pup in the game uh, over uh, in 1999, Jeff was the man over at the other station, and uh, all the other uh, producers that were there looked up to him, and he was the guy that brought. Uh, I'm bl- I'm bl- Guys. Well, it, 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 it's good <laughs> stuff to tell because literally, I mean, you were overdoing your thing in, in Rhode Island and it was because of, you know, your guys' sales model that allowed the owner of the station to purchase to another purchase station. Uh, and Phoenix station you know, in Arizona, and then, right, right. Right. And then you moved out there because of that one. Because uh, I, I remember running simulcast satellite stuff yeah, from the yeah. other station back east. Yeah, we st- that's in, I guess I kind of skipped over that part. We started <laughs> back east. And, you know, we took a company that was barely in the black and we turned it into a network that the owner outbid Disney for a 50,000 watt station in Phoenix, Arizona. Let me tell these guys, if you guys don't know, 50,000 watts is the, is, is, yeah, it's the biggest um, blowtorch on, on the AM side that you can that you can acquire uh, for sending out your signal to whatever radius it is. It, uh, it is literally the biggest. So, um, like, yeah, you, and we'll probably <laughs> have a... Uh, it's there's a much deeper explanation for these things like AM FM. You know right. what's the power differences, and we'll get into that on a different show because I I actually thought about that <laughs> last night. I was practicing and I was talking to myself and I started doing the same thing like AM FM. I'm like, oh god, I can get into this for you know the next three hours and explain all of this. But anyway. For, when, when we go over that with that show, I'll make sure I have the graph, right? That shows yeah. the short wavelengths versus long wavelengths on one and the other, and we can show everybody yeah, what the difference. High and one's yeah, low. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but so where were we? We were uh, you, you were talking about that shift over in time for bringing over uh, from uh, the other station back east yes. and, and that business model from bringing that one in the black uh, yep. and, and getting it over here. Yeah, we, so we were able to purchase the fifty thousand watt station in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I came out with the owner the owner's brother, and two of the guys I had already trained for their jobs uh, back in Rhode Island. So we had a whopping five-man crew. So we had to hire everybody, uh, and I was in charge of teaching all of the new executive producers their jobs and their roles, teaching the executive <laughs> producers, teaching the sales is that, is that when you guys, you guys shared offices, right? Where there, like yeah. there would be a senior person and then whoever the new one is would come and sit with the senior person after, to like after learn. After some time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, re- I remember some of that. <laughs> yep, yep. And in fact, you know, I, I trained all the guys that came in. Um, but anyway, uh, that was, you know, those were good times. But to be quite honest with you, did not get along with the owner of that company. Uh, the first week that I started working for this gentleman, I threatened to throw him out the window. So we established our relationship early. Yeah, that's something you, you and I have that in common yeah. with with uh, uh, the station yeah. ownership. Uh-huh. I, I have a little issue with uh, one of the one of those uh, humans. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> right, right. He was a he was a he was a hell of a guy. Anyway, okay. So to get back to where who I am, um, back in '99, I had a meeting with the owners of Surfnet Media. Uh, Surfnet Media at the time had Boombox Radio. Boombox was a music uh, network. Uh, it, Michelle, she programmed the punk rock station. They had R and B, jazz, classic rock, all the stations uh, that you would you would have. Uh, if they had kept going, it could have been the Pandora or one of the big boys that picked up some money. Uh, I know we're coming up on break here, so I'm probably going to have to. Uh, the story will continue, but yeah, guys, when we come back from the break, we'll have a little bit more. Jeff will tell you about yeah. uh, the Boombox Radio piece and how that. I'll get uh, you into how we get into internet media, internet radio. 
Right on, guys. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll be back right after these quick commercial break. And uh, don't forget, you can find us on uh, Twitter at Voice America TRN, at Radio Ryan One, at Jeff Spinney Two. And we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back after these messages. Don't forget Facebook Live. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the radio show, Finding Your Frequency, with your host, Mr. Jeff Spinard, and myself, Ryan Treasure. We're back on it live, VoiceAmericaVariety.com. Go check out our Twitter, at VoiceAmericaTRN, at Jeff Spinney 2 and then, of course, at Radio Ryan, and we got the live stream going out here on Facebook Live. Jeff, welcome back. We are back, and we are kicking in. So uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Um, And, of course, that was the move from uh, terrestrial media, which for those of you who are not in the industry, uh, Ryan, terrestrial radio is? Land-based radio. Thank you. Yep. Uh, How we moved from terrestrial into the Internet model. Um, I had been in media now for seven years. I had worked with hundreds of professionals and work with them not only on how to create their shows, how to build their audience, how to create customized media kits, how to sell advertising. There's a lot that I worked with with my clients on an individual basis, but I also work with them on syndication. With terrestrial radio, you're geographically limited. You're confined to a, 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 a circle on a piece of paper that has a coverage area, uh, and whether it's $4 million, $22 million, in either case, you're confined, confined. That's what kind of bothered me about what I could do with my clients because we were always, even though I had up to 5 million people to reach, it was very difficult to build a community on uh, t- terrestrial radio. Uh, so when I had the opportunity to talk to the guys at Surfing, I realized that internet radio, the information superhighway at the time, was just a, it, the light bulb went off, and it's like, why can't we do this on the internet? So, lo and behold, we created the very first live internet talk radio network. So, uh, Jeff Spinard, uh, Surfnet Media, uh, some of the other fellows that were with us do have the title of pioneering the first all-talk live uh, internet broadcasting company on the web. So, you know, kudos, uh, thumbs up to that. Boom, thumbs up to that for sure. Okay, I'm glad you guys did that because I wouldn't have a job (laughs) if you guys didn't create Voice America. Created a whole new (laughs) space. It was a beautiful thing. Uh, That was a difficult, uh, difficult build. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than what it really was. Uh, the first three years, I mean, I went from a six-figure salary uh, to, I believe, 16000 my first year. Uh, my second year was not much better. Third year was a little better than that. Uh, but it wasn't, I thought that people would catch on to this, you know. Everybody was, thinks like me, right? It was definitely, <laughs> a, I could, even now, like, podcasting is still, it, it's popular, right? And I think it had a little bit uh, of popularity even further, you know, in the back. And I don't like well, using the word podcasting. I just use it because that's what, you know, most of the listeners kind of, you know, uh, uh, internalize when they talk about like, on-demand radio, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely ahead of its time, man. You guys were some yeah. pioneers for sure. But there wasn't even audio really <laughs> on the Internet in 1999. Yeah. Yep, it took a, a good solid four years uh, to accomplish anything with the uh, with that network. Uh, but I think I'm going into explaining the network before finishing off explaining who I am, or it all kind of rolls. Together. It, it does kind of roll together a little. <laughs> I mean, okay. So anyway, uh, back to uh, the building the internet presence. Uh, it took four years to get any kind of consistent format. The company went public at that time. Uh, But about two years into the public uh, entity, when I was the uh, vice president at the time, that's when I realized that I had found my frequency. Uh, It took years. Sometimes you don't realize it right away. Some people don't know it right now. Uh, Some people are still searching for that. Uh, But that's when I found my frequency. I realized this is going to be my life uh, and was going to be something that I would be involved with 
until I don't know when. Again, right. my frequency could change, but right now I have found my frequency. So um, when we went through the uh, the uh, – what's the word I'm looking for, Ryan? Uh, public? Yes, public. <laughs> <laughs> See, these are the mistakes that will be made that we'll call out on. So, uh, yeah, once we hit the – when we got through the public phase, at the end of 2009, we went private – I stepped down at the time I was the president uh, of the radio division. Uh, I w- sat on the board of, uh, of directors. So I stepped down from the board. I resigned from the company, and I took over ownership of Voice America. And the 35 employees that were <laughs> part of the company, and uh, by that time I knew Ryan well. Ryan was my right-hand man. He was the guy running the the, uh, the broadcast operation. Anything that we needed Ryan to do, uh, whether it was technology based or operationally based, uh, this man is by far uh, a, a huge asset to myself and to the company. So, Thank you. it was an easy decision for me to make Ryan my vice president of broadcast operations. So. That was an easy choice. So, thanks, man. Uh, great job, great job there. Uh, so, over the next five years now, now that the company goes from uh, different hands. You know, our C levels were different levels that <laughs> weren't really radio guys. So, their first, you know, uh, love and passion was not uh, radio or media. It was more the business side of things. Yeah, there was a couple of guys that, you know, were on at that time that were like uh, technology guys that were pretty helpful in some yeah, in some places. Well, we, need, we needed technology, yeah. but there wasn't enough there wasn't enough radio media influence experience right. to, to, to put more money into the radio side because the radio piece of the operation was the profitable piece. Yeah. The other two silos were losing money. Yeah. So we had to make enough money to cover every silo. So we couldn't put money into our side of the, the radio side to grow and expand the radio. Yeah, you and I had a pretty extensive conversation right in, uh, it was probably like December of 2009 during that transition. And, you know, for me as being, you know, a media guy and, and a radio guy from before and then also Voice America, um, you know, it was, you and I were excited about, uh, you know, radio right. being, you know, operationally ran and radio by hands, radio right. people, you know, so that was a definitely a good shift. And we've seen a lot of cool, uh, a lot of cool transitional elements since then too, with, you know, new channels that have come on board and, uh, you know, new facilities and new people <laughs> and uh, really growing uh, because of stuff like yeah. Facebook Live and, you know, social media exploded since then. We'll it's been crazy. You know, we'll, we'll get into that. Let me just wrap up who the hell I am and then we can move on. <laughs> Uh, get this show over with. But anyway, uh, not the show. I mean, my, uh, my, who I am. So anyway, okay. I, at this point now am the sole proprietor of, uh, world talk radio LLC, which is the parent company to voice America.com voice America.tv. Now voice America.tv, uh, immediately when I took over the TV side, I mean the radio uh, network, uh, within six months, we launched VoiceAmerica.tv. Uh, now, .tv did not have a lot of attention because we still had to build, uh, and because we just took over the radio side, the public entity took all the money out of the accounts, so we basically started from scratch, uh, but we quickly... Uh, turn the company into a profitable company because we were Guys, already making li- money. Literally, there was zero dollars when 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 Jeff took that over yep. in 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 the end of two thousand nine. Yep. Zero bucks. Zero bucks in the account. <laughs> uh, but by the end of the first zero, month, zero bucks were given. <laughs> <laughs> yes, zero bucks were given, and uh, everything was taken. So, yeah. you know, we did a great job the first three months out of the gate. You know, immediately we had money in the account. We were able to do things uh, that we wanted to do. But again, it was in radio hands. So. We launched the TV channel. Uh, we started doing things with TV, but we weren't really focused on it. We were still focused on the radio pieces. We were adding additional channels. But again, that's what I was saying. That's when I found my frequency. Being an entrepreneur, uh, always having that entrepreneurial spirit, I always felt like I worked for myself. You know, Even when I was an executive producer, whether I was in sales, the fact that you work... Uh, on commission and what you're able to generate, 
uh, that means that it's my business. Yeah, you had to run with your brung. Exactly. <laughs> you know what? If I'm making money, then so is my company. So that's always how I kind of lived. Uh, but then, of course, taking over the company uh, and building and growing the company, uh, we are in a position now that we're doing a lot of different things. And once again, you'll learn about all the things that Voice Mark is working on. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of how I found my frequency. That's who Jeff Spinard is. Uh, and, you know, hey, you're going to, again, we're going to teach and educate and help you guys learn everything that uh, we can teach. Guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back for this last segment and wrap up the launch of Finding Your Frequency right here on VoiceAmericaVariety.com. Stay tuned. Facebook Live, we see your messages. Uh, Jeffrey, yeah. what's up? Vivian, hi. Thank you guys for tuning in. We appreciate it. And uh, yes, stay Jeff, tuned, guys. Everywhere. We'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to the radio show, guys. Please call in 866-472-5788. We're taking callers live, uh, doing our thing here. Uh, Jeff Spinard was just talking a little bit about some of the growth pieces with uh, Voice America and where we were going and, you know, real excited about that. Don't forget, go check us out on Facebook Live at Voice America TRN and at Jeff Spinney 2. Uh, that's Jeff's Twitter uh, and JeffSpinard.com. Find out all about the book. Uh, Jeff, why don't you kind of walk us through, you know, where you left off there with that piece on... On, uh, uh, you know the growth piece of Voice America. You know we're we're moving into a new kind of uh, stage with the company, yes. and uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, well, the growth uh, growth of the company. You know, uh, doing uh, radio, doing TV. We also have a team that's out on the road now. Uh, we do live events uh, all over the world. We we do them. Uh, we happen to be in Canada at this point, uh, but that is one of the new pieces that. Voice America has added to its repertoire. Yeah, the live events page, the, right? Yep. Yeah, you guys can check out the live events page at uh, voiceamerica.com forward slash live events. Or if you're on the website, uh, you can just uh, push the live events button up there on the menu and go check it out. They're streaming live right now yep. uh, from British Columbia, Canada at the IPBC Ignite Conference. So go check that out and got a lot of other stuff coming up soon. Yep. We've got uh, the Pitbull Hard Money Conference coming up on the 24th. Uh, this will be the third annual event. Actually, it's the 42nd? 42nd 40, annual yeah. event. And then uh, we've been there for the last three years. And because of what we add to the uh, uh, the whole event, the owner, uh, Leonard Rosen, he is doing an event here in Scottsdale, Arizona, March 2nd, specifically because of the live broadcast that we do at the event. It has gone over so well that he is bringing his event to Phoenix so that he can get live TV, radio, the whole package. So that is one of our growth uh, growth operational, growth uh, products that we work with is the live events and going out to different locations. Yeah, I think this year we've probably done more live events this year than we probably did in the last two or three years combined. I'd say over the eight months <laughs> we've done more. Yeah, we've done a lot. Um, some other stuff that we have coming up that I think is really noteworthy, uh, we're going to be in New York in uh, November 2nd and 3rd, uh, and we're going to be broadcasting live on the uh, live events page uh, at a conference called Ad Tech New York, uh, and it's a, a really big uh, ad tech kind of conference centered around the technology for delivery ads and live and live linear and you know all those kind of things and we're really excited about being there uh, in a, and, and bringing ad tech uh, a, a whole forum and community that we're gonna be involved with along with Lori Schwartz the tech cat and that's gonna be a good one well, yeah. we're gonna meet a lot of high-profile interesting people on that one um, yeah also uh, let's talk a little bit about finding your frequency the book let's do it okay uh, this is kind of what we have moving into the future uh, the book itself, like I said, it covers different uh, different ideas and concepts uh, about finding your frequency and how to broadcast your message. Uh, but we'll, each week, each segment is going to be a different chapter. First of all, we'll be talking about you know defining your message, defining your audience, choosing your medium. Is it radio? Is it TV? Voiceamerica.com, voiceamerica.tv. Oh my God, yes. That's, yes, that's well, the medium. Yes. There is no other. <laughs> well, choosing the medium, whether you feel as though you should yeah. be on the radio or TV or both, uh, which also brings us into mm -hmm. the more new content, uh, the private label networks. Yeah. Rebecca Greuter Hall. Uh, Rebecca, if you're listening, 
how are you? Uh, we love you very much. Rebecca is one of our clients that not only hosts a radio show, but she also has her own TV channel on voiceamerica.tv. And come the new year, she will have a private label network. I'm not sure what uh, the title of her network is going to be, if it's the Rebecca Gorder Hall Network or if she's, you know, put something behind it. But she's going to have her own TV network powered by Voice America. Yeah, guys, stay tuned on the uh, Voice America TV fan page on Facebook and, of course, our at Voice America TV Twitter. And in the next uh, 30 days or so, we'll start dropping some hints on, you know, what Rebecca's doing with her private label channel. And then, of course, if you guys ever have uh, questions out there and, you know, want to know about leveraging the VoiceAmerica.com and TV platforms for anything that you guys are working on, you can always, you know, give us a call here at the studio or shoot uh, an email over to info at VoiceAmerica.com. And, you know, we'll be real happy happy to connect with you guys and, you know, walk you through the process of what we do and how we can help you guys absolutely. too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, and again, uh, defining your goals, planning your strategy, uh, the basic structure of a broadcast, preparing your broadcast toolkit, how to find guests, uh, building and keeping uh, an audience, you know, using press releases and, yeah. you know, to promote your show, self-syndicating your broadcast. That's a big one. A lot of people want to know okay, there's what's called points of presence, uh, and that's basically syndicating your show. Different type of Yeah, to gain the most maximum exposure for the content you create. Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll have a big company for, uh, for that particular mm -hmm. show. Uh, and then, of course, how to monetize your broadcast. Everybody wants to know, how can I make money with my broadcast? So for a lot of people that are listening, uh, even our own host that might be tuning in, uh, how to monetize your broadcast. Ryan and I are going to do it ourselves. Uh, in all the successes, we will share with you. So we're going to teach you how to monetize your broadcast. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, one of the most important things. But I think it's important to also remember, too, that monetization of a broadcast doesn't necessarily always That's come from way, right. right like dollars for playing commercials on your radio show right. there's a there's a whole unwritten component of networking and meeting some people yeah uh, i think every minute uh, of your show uh you're reaching somebody you have a built-in audience every listener uh equals uh potential sales so when people want to advertise or promote, you're right, it's not just the inventory or the commercial time. Uh, it's live mentions. There's a shelf life yeah. to the show. You could give somebody you know, maybe a five-minute uh, time slot during your show to promote themselves. Uh, yeah, yeah, when we get into that piece, it's going to be really interesting because I think we have, you know, like a lot of success stories that we've had with our hosts that we can uh, even bring to the table with that. And uh, like Jeff said earlier in the show, we're not giving away the secret sauce, uh, but at the same time, we want to inform, educate and inspire everybody to, you know, find their frequency and get their message out to the world, uh, you know, leveraging some of the things that are in the book. And, um, you know, I think uh, let's talk about the first uh, the first section of the book book because I think that's where we're going to be going for the next show uh, with the you know defining and, and really move into talking about that here with our three minutes left in the show well it's I moving mean, so fast well here we are <laughs> it is moving fast here it is defining uh, your message uh, this book uh, was me defining my message and what I wanted to get out there so now we're doing it live on the air this show was simply an introductory show so we're not really, uh, we're educating you on who we are and what our background is. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the, the foundation of the show. Uh, so this show, once it's over, will be on our host page. You can go uh, listen to the show 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It'll always be there. Uh, but moving forward, like I just went through all the topics, that's what this show is about for me anyway, that's how I found my message. Now, I've worked with, I'll give you a prime example. Here's a guy. I don't know if anybody's heard of this guy. His name is George Lucas. Who's that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, maybe <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little hint. 
Star Wars. Oh, man, my favorite of all time. You know it is? Yeah, yeah. Right, you already right. know how much of a Star Wars dork I am. Yes, I do. Shout out to Jason in the yep. back. He's got Star Wars shoes Shout on. Shout out to David Ide. He's yeah. a Star Wars fan, David. too. Oh, so yeah. David is my uh, my partner in crime. My Well, not partner. Ryan's my partner in crime. David <laughs> is my partner for the business. Uh, he's my CFO. He handles the, the money, you know. I'm not good at handling money. He's good at the business, and he'll handle the money. I'll just bring it in. <laughs> anyway, George Lucas. Uh, I started working with the Educational Foundation uh, back in the early 2000s. Uh, the goal, they were putting together the magazine. The goal was to build the magazine and get it to in enough hands and get enough people to be uh, a part of the magazine, whether it's uh, editorial-wise, whether it's guest-wise, whether it's interview-wise, but they used the show to put this magazine together. They did a 13-week pilot that turned into two years. After two years, they were so busy with this that they were done with the show, it accomplished its mission, and they moved on. And you know what, guys? You're going to have to wait until next week to hear more about the defining your message portion because that was that, that was how Jeff Spinard helped uh, that foundation start to define their message and get that out, leveraging live Internet talk radio. And we're going to bring a whole lot more to you guys over the next 13 weeks going through all the chapters on finding your frequency, bringing out some really good guests. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Absolutely. And we'll see you guys next week at Radio Ryan 1, at Jeff Spinney 2, at Voice America, TRN, Facebook Live, all that. Thank you guys Thanks for tuning for in tuning so in. much.